The ice caps are melting, the forests are on fire, and the storms are getting worse. But just focusing on climate change is short-sighted. In 50 years, we will run out of coal and oil and natural gas. These three sources represent 77% of global energy production today. So yes, let's save the polar bears. But for our modern society to continue, we also need to come up with new sources of energy. We either need to get much better at capturing energy from the sun, or we need to create our own sun here on Earth. Let's talk about both. Humanity is on a shot clock. Every year we use 175,000 terawatt hours of energy. Tera means trillion, and a thousand watts is about a microwave. So if our world was nothing but microwaves, we could power 20 billion of them all year continuously. But there's a problem. All of the remaining oil on Earth could only power that many microwaves for 16 and a half years. Coal could keep us going for another 11 years, and natural gas could keep us going for 12 years after that. But that's not that long before we are completely out of energy. Assuming that we totally run out, we'll then turn to nuclear power. Fission is the technology behind the atomic bombs, nuclear power plants, and the Oppenheimer movie that just came to theaters. Fission means division. It's literally bombarding an atom with neutrons so it splits apart. We choose heavy atoms like uranium for this job because they contain much more energy, but really because they're bigger targets for our neutron bombardment. We have about 16 million metric tons of uranium in the Earth's crust. And assuming that we can use all of it at an ambitious 5 million megajoules per kilogram, that equates to 126 more years of energy. That's more than the fossil fuels give us, but it still only gets us to the year 2188. The traditional resources used to generate energy on Earth are finite, and someday soon, our shot clock will run out, and then we'll be entirely reliant upon stars. Our home star, the Sun, is immensely powerful. Every year, it emits 3.3 trillion terawatt hours of energy. That's 3.3 trillion trillion watt hours of energy. If we could just capture that much energy for a single hour, we could power humanity for 2,150 years straight. Unfortunately, the sun radiates that energy in all directions equally. So barring a visit from a benevolent alien who gives us a Dyson sphere, we're likely to see less than one-tenth of a percent of the sun's energy here on Earth. Humanity harnesses the sun's power today in lots of ways. There's traditional solar power, which captures energy from the sun's photons as they hit photovoltaic cells. We also capture the sun's energy from wind that it creates by causing temperature gradients, from water that moves against gravity in the water cycle and then flows downhill, and from organic matter that the sun feeds and that we can then burn. Collectively, these sources represent only about 20% of our current global energy production. So back to our shot clock, figuring out how to 5x our solar energy capturing in 50 years, that seems doable. The thing that's working in our favor is that today we are very bad at this. <laughs> we are very bad at capturing the sun's energy. We're harnessing just 0.002% of the energy that hits the earth today. All we have to do is increase that to 0.01% and we'll be able to power all of modern life sustainably forever. And so honestly, that solution is probably good enough, <laughs> but I'm a technology person and I'm an optimist and I could not end this video without talking about fusion, which is literally creating our own sun, our own star here on Earth. The sun itself is massive. It's 99.8% of the total mass in the universe. I didn't actually realize this, but suns are just really big planets that are so big that they collapse in on themselves. It seems like Jupiter's almost there, and it turns out it is. It's actually just a little tiny bit away from becoming a star. If we just bombard it with enough matter, maybe we make a second sun, maybe that's strategy. We'll talk about that at another day. Uh, but at the center of the sun, because it's so massive, there's these points that are being pushed up by the entire mass of the sun that's above it, an incredible amount of mass. It's 265 billion times greater pressure than at the sea level of Earth. That pressure heats up the hydrogen in the sun to 15 million degrees Celsius. It's hot enough that it can overcome the force that is separating the atoms from each other, which means that four individual hydrogen atoms combine together and form one helium. That process is called fusion, and it releases an enormous amount of energy. Well, we can't create a sun-sized object here on Earth, but if we could create a tiny pocket-sized sun, it would generate basically unlimited energy. By my quick napkin math, there's about 100 million times more hydrogen than uranium on Earth, and since each ton of hydrogen actually contains 10 times more energy than the same amount of uranium, that's a billion times more potential energy production, 100 billion years of energy production that could come from fusion. 
So it seems like it would be worth a try. And we have been trying. We've been trying to harness fusion since the Cold War. Um, the first fusion generator design that showed any promise was called the tokamak. It could hold the super hot fusion reaction in place using magnetic fields. And a tokamak generated plasma for the first time in 1983, a long time ago. And it set a record in 1997 with the most efficient fusion reaction of all time. But it was still a long ways from being useful. What the tokamak was chasing, what all the fusion technologies today are chasing, is net energy production, which they represent with this letter Q. Q is equal to the amount of energy produced in a fusion reaction divided by the energy it takes to sustain and start that reaction. So if it's greater than one, you're generating power. If it's less than one, then you're not. One particular tokamak topped out at 0.67, and really that's as good as we've ever done. You might remember the headline from last year where Lawrence Livermore National Lab announced that it had achieved a Q value of 1.54, which would be amazing. It would mean that we had did fusion. We did it sustainably and we could do it forever and generate all our electricity for all time. But that definition didn't count the energy they used to power the lasers that actually did like cause the fusion. But all that said, all these challenges behind us, from first principles, there's no reason why we can't do fusion here on Earth. We'll never see pressures of 265 billion times sea level, but we can compensate for that because we can create temperatures that are way, way, way above 15 million degrees Celsius. The hottest temperature ever recorded, not just on Earth, but also in the entire universe, was at Brookhaven National Lab in New York, where researchers slammed gold atoms together to create a short-term temperature of four trillion degrees. <laughs> so creating a star on Earth isn't just a science experiment, it's an engineering exercise. We know that we can do it, it's just a matter of actually making it happen. Recently, investors have been putting a ton of money behind fusion startups. And the coolest thing is that all of them are trying out these absolutely crazy ideas for how we generate the fusion, but then keep that super, super hot plasma from touching anything. There's nothing that we can create that is hot enough to withstand those extremely intense temperatures. So Basically, all we need to do is find a way to hold it together. And one project, ITER, 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 I think, uh, is the world's biggest tokamak. It's about a $63 billion project that has been funded by world governments. Think like the United Nations kind of thing. Uh, Helion is a company that is firing fusion guns at each other. They're basically creating these two donuts and they're slamming them together in the middle to create the plasma uh, that they hold in place with magnets. Um, they've raised over $2 billion from investors that include Sam Altman, who's the, uh, you know, as the CEO of OpenAI. TAE Technologies has raised over a billion dollars, I'd never heard of them, billion dollar uh, funded company, uh, using a similar approach, but it holds the plasma in place with a gas, interestingly. Um, Thea Energy is trying a Stellarator design, so basically instead of it just being a loop like a normal tokamak, it is a, a twisty, crazy thing. So it can spin the fusion, it's, I, I don't even know, it's like spinning it so it can hold it in place and it can operate continuously, crazy. General Fusion raised $322 million for a design that uses liquid metal walls uh, that are rotating in like a centrifuge kind of thing, but then they get impacted in and they like push the, the plasma in place that way. Absolutely crazy. That's all to say, we have a lot of irons in the fire. <laughs> we have a lot of things that could work to create fusion. Uh, we're not sure if they will yet. We're not sure if it's actually gonna work, but we hope it will. If we do make it work, then limitless energy is within our reach. So we only have 50 years left of fossil fuel power. And in those 50 years, we have to figure out how to add a few hundred or a few thousand years onto our shot clock. Um, and we can do it. I mean, we either we have to get five times better at capturing energy from the sun, seems doable, or we have to create a fusion reaction with a Q over one. You know, there are so many different possibilities for how we can achieve it. We can do it and we will do it. Uh, all that's left is the engineering.